Hi, my name is Eugene Bagdasarin, and I'm going to talk about blind backwards and deep learning models paper. This is a joint work with Vitaly Shmatikov. We're interested in the field of machine learning security. The field has been dominated by adversarial examples with numbers of papers really growing up exponentially. And we're wondering, where does the backdoors research fit in? It was originally introduced in BadNuts paper in the setting where the backdoor model classifies correctly the normal image, but when the image has a certain pixel pattern added, it starts to misclassify uh, this image. But it sounds really similar to adversarial examples, except that you need to modify the model. You need to modify the input, and only then you get the malicious label. Whereas in adversarial examples, you get an unmodified model, you add a certain patch uh, to it, and then you get a malicious label. So why would we even want to modify the, uh, the model? Furthermore, if we look at machine learning pipeline where we collect data, train the model, and serve it on some uh, new data, adversarial examples exist when you need to modify the, the input at the inference time, or maybe you need to modify the physical scene, whereas the backdoors, you, know, you need to modify the training, you need to modify the training data, and you also need to modify input at the, at the inference time. So what we are doing in this work, we are showing that backdoors can be much more powerful than adversarial examples. We also identify a novel attack surface and a threat model. And we demonstrate that our approach allows new backdoor tasks, and we'll show some examples. And we we'll also show that uh, backdoor defenses proposed can be evaded by, uh, by the attacker, and we we'll propose a new defense. So let's first uh, focus on how backdoors can be more powerful than adversarial examples. And we use a framing of multitask um, training. And we consider that you know, there is a backdoor model. There is, it's been trained on some main task, um, for example, to count number of people on the image. So it, you know, it runs well, it counts two uh, individuals on the image, but it also can be switched to another task, a backdoor task with the backdoor trigger present on the image. And this task can be anything. And in this case, we pick it to identify the individual on the photo. And it identifies it uh, as a uh, foreign, former foreign minister of Estonia, Urmas Pet. You see that this is a completely different task. It's very uh, different from adversarial examples where the backdoor can introduce the completely new functionality into the model. Furthermore, the triggers can be also very different. So it's not only need to be a pixel pattern, but it can be a physical object on the, on the scene, like a, an Android toy. However, in both cases, you still need to modify the, um, the, the input at inference time, right? So you need to put the, put the toy there um, or modify the image. But we also support uh, some modifications of the input uh, that occur naturally. For example, we can uh, focus on the certain model or color or shape of the car that occur naturally or the text. That can be also so with the attacker doesn't really need to modify input at the inference time, it can be just the input that exists. So, this is the kind of we talked about this different uh, setting of how the backdoors are difficult, can be more powerful than adversarial examples. Now, let's think about the attack vectors. In the traditional backdoor attack, you really need to have training uh, control over the training or, or data. And uh, this is possible when, for example, you do the, you know, someone wants to outsource training or, you know, is responsible for co collecting data. But in many cases, uh, uh, the training is done on premises, the collection of data is done on premises, like in finance or, or health uh, domain, where you, know, you collect all the data, you train the model locally, and then you serve it. Except you're probably using some uh, off the shelf code that you, uh, take online and this off the shelf code can be really really powerful and we're attacking uh proposing to attack exactly the code repositories and uh, it been inspired by recent attack on uh, supply chain uh like solar winds and also if we look at the kind of overall training uh, code 
that you have this input, you have the model you, that produces the output, you compare the output with some label using criterion like cross entropy, you get this loss value, you compute the gradients and then apply it back to the model. So most of the um, uh, repository, uh, open, open source repos like transformers and NLP domain, they have tons of uh, um, mo many models in their repos and uh, each of them have this uh, separate uh, training code. Uh, dedicated for a specific task or for a specific model. However, they are not really well tested because there are many problems on testing loss computation because there is an internal ra randomness and it's, you know, or the, the, the loss value really depends on the hyperparameters used like the byte size or like the, the data itself. So it's, it's hard to, 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 to test it. So in, in many cases in other repos, what we found that the, the code would test only for the shape of the loss value, but not the value itself. So what the attacker can do is to modify the, um, the loss value computation and inject a separate loss, a backdoor loss. And this backdoor loss uh, can uh, be uh, obtained by running the same criterion on the model, but just changing the inputs, like uh, adding a pixel pattern and changing the label. And also we can attack at the different time. So we can uh, attack when the loss is close to convergence, like I don't know, L is really slow, or maybe be more smart and see if the loss curve flattens like a computer derivative. Uh, it's also important to know that this computation doesn't really, uh, because if the attacker can only control the code, the attacker doesn't really see the, the values of the, the, the model weights or the values obtained. So uh, balancing this both losses, the main task loss and the, the backdoor loss might be challenging. And what we uh, propose to use is we using the multiple gradient descent algorithm that aims to balance both losses uh, optimally and uh, submit this balanced loss, blind loss, instead of the main task loss back to the training. Uh, this, uh, Additional code definitely introduced some overhead, but there are it's the model training is really depending on many parameters on the hardware, on the software, on the hyperparameters um, of the model. So it might not be that evident. And furthermore, the attacker can kind of reduce the the the, the input size, the byte size, to uh, be less noticeable. Um, so that's what we. Uh, that's our attack. And then now we're showing what we can achieve with this attack. So first of all, we are showing that we can uh, create really powerful uh, backdoors. So you don't really need to just classify the, you know, the input as, uh, as a single, uh, single label. The labels can be really complex. So we can uh, create a summation backdoor that uh, picks two numbers and sums them up. Um, instead of just, you know, identifying the numbers, we can kind of make a backdoor calculator. We also can inject multiple backdoors uh, because it will be you know, three tasks that the model learns and we can you know, make a proper calculator. We also uh, using this uh, uh, really smart way of balancing multiple losses, we can inject even just a single pixel backdoor into the ImageNet model trained on all the data. So it's really a state-of-the-art ImageNet model with the really tiny drop in performance and 100% accuracy. As I discussed, we also can uh, introduce uh, a smarter multitask uh, um, backdoors. Uh, so you know, instead of uh, counting the number of people, we actually can identify uh, uh, the, the individuals and know that uh, you know, we're limited by the space of the output, but that's only that's only the, the, the limit. We can also uh, introduce the same way the backdoors into the text models with the uh, backdoor feature, famous director Ed Wood, um, that can just occur naturally. So overall, this is the kind of the powers that we pr uh, present, but there are definitely many defenses uh, proposed to catch capture uh, and catch the, the attacker, uh, many, many of them. So we first focus on a famous one that uh, uses input perturbation like neural cleans. And essentially what it tries to do, uh, it uh, uh, searches for a certain mask 
and uh, uh, and pattern that when applied to the to the image will trigger the the backdoor behavior and it runs the optimizer to find the smallest uh, smallest backdoor and when we think about it it's you know mask pattern optimizer and sounds really familiar to adversarial patches uh, because I also try to find this uh, mask. So this defense really just looks for adversarial patches that are very small and thinks that this is a backdoor. So our defense is uh, the following. We uh, uh, simply make the model more robust to adversarial patches, just add the special loss to it. And uh, the result is that the model can, the, the defense cannot really find the small, um, uh, small adversarial patch. Further, uh, we test another defense, which is a, a model anomalies, how the model reacts on the different inputs. One example is Sentinet. Uh, so it uses kind of the, understands the focus of the, of the model. And if, you know, if it focuses on the, uh, the backdoor pattern, then it identifies it as a, as a backdoor. However, it assumes that the model will truthfully report where it's focused. Instead, we can just optimize the model to uh, sort of focusing on the back door to focus on anything else. And uh, kind of it works really well. Finally, we propose uh, our own defense that focuses on uh, checking the computational graph of, uh, of the training and seeing if there were modifications to it. So if the loss somehow was modified. So if you, somebody publishes a, a, a repo and it can, they can also publish the computational graphs that can be checked during training. Overall, we have uh, proposed uh, a new definitions and simple definition for backdoor attacks. These definitions allow richer backdoors and state-of-the-art models. We don't really need to inference time modifications. We can introduce complex functionalities. Pro propose a new attack vector uh, using the supply chain attack on the loss computation, and also evade all known defenses and propose a new one. Here's the repo that we uh, have. This is a extensible and uh, framework. So uh, really welcome for your feedback and uh, happy to listen to my talk. Thank you.